If you want a new PC build, PC Power Picker is one of the most useful tools you can use to put your PC together. However, if you're a beginner or you don't have enough knowledge and you don't know what you're doing, you can end up bottlenecking the system or making your gaming experience a headache. Or even worse, putting together a system that doesn't even work. So in this video, I will explain how to use PC Power Picker to put together the perfect PC build for gaming in 2023. And at the end of the video, you will have some knowledge on how to do it yourself and also you will have the perfect PC for your budget guaranteed. So make sure to stay until the end. That being said, let's start. First, we are going to talk about the CPU. What CPU to pick will depend on your budget and needs. And since most of my viewers search for gaming PCs, this will be a guide for gaming PC builds. Anyway, here you can select between Intel and AMD. For gaming on a budget, an Intel i3 12 or 13 gen will be enough or a Ryzen 5 5500 from AMD. However, if you want to also do streaming and productivity work, I would recommend at least a six core processor in the i5-12400F or Ryzen 5 5600 and above. Once again, this will depend on your budget. Since we are working with PCs for gaming, the priority should be the graphics card. As long as you get a CPU that will not bottleneck your GPU, you're going to be fine. There are bottleneck calculators online, although they are not the most accurate. I highly recommend you picking the CPU and the graphics card combo based on your favorite game. Since games like CSGO, Valorant and FPS shooters in general are more CPU demanding, in that case, getting a more balanced system would be ideal. But if you play games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Howard's Legacy, these are more GPU demanding games, so in that case, I will be prioritizing the GPU. But more often than not, prioritizing the GPU is going to be the best option. On the CPU cooler section, you can pick an aftermarket CPU cooler for the CPU. Most people overspend here, thinking that they need a high-end cooler like a 360 all-in-one liquid cooler and to be honest, I would only buy a high-end cooler if you're going to buy an i7, i9 or a Ryzen 9 CPU. For the most part, a $40 to $60 air cooler is going to be enough and also some CPUs come with the stock cooler included so sometimes getting an aftermarket CPU cooler is not even necessary, especially if you have a tight budget. Then on the motherboard, I do recommend you doing a little bit of extra research here since there are plenty of options for different scenarios and not every motherboard is compatible for every CPU. However, lucky for you, since you pick the CPU first, PC Power Picker will automatically give you the motherboard options that are compatible with the processor. The chipset will depend on what CPU you picked, but for PC builds, I recommend at least a B550 if you're going with a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series, a B650 if you're going with a Ryzen 7000 series, a B660 if you want Intel 12 or 13 gen. These are the minimum I would recommend. In the memory section, it's not really complicated. For budget builds, I would recommend 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, 3200 or 3600 megahertz with CL16 or CL18 speeds. Just pick the memory that you like the most. Remember, most of them will perform the same, especially if the specifications and speeds are the same. So don't spend a lot on a 16 gigs of RAM kit since you might be able to get 32 gigs of RAM at the same price because the price difference right now is not that big. For PC builds above $700, I would consider getting 32 gigs of RAM. This will help you if you want to do streaming or multitasking. I would recommend DDR5 memory if you're going to spend a thousand dollars or more in your system. Moving on to the storage, it is a must that you get an M.2 SSD. Getting anything lower than that does not make any sense since the price difference is basically non-existent. And M.2 SSDs are the fastest. You can get a Gen 4 or a Gen 3 SSD depending on your budget. Just note that for gaming, you will not achieve higher FPS by choosing a Gen 4 SSD. It will not affect your gaming performance. So please do not overspend. One terabyte is the standard for gaming, but if you download a bunch of games, two terabytes is recommended. However, if you have a motherboard that supports two or more M.2 SSDs, you can get one terabyte and then upgrade down the line if you need it. Then for the graphics card and the most important component in terms of performance, you will have my latest video on the best graphics cards for different budget and resolutions in the top right of the screen for more information. There are many options and I don't want to complicate things, but first you need to make sure your CPU will not bottleneck your GPU. Secondly, you need to pick the right GPU for your needs. If you play at 1080p, I would recommend a graphics card with 8 gigs of VRAM or more. You can get away with 6 gigs of VRAM depending on the game that you play. The easier to run the games that you play 
48 hour, the less VRAM that you need. For 1080p, I would recommend a level of performance of at least an RTX 3050 or RX 6600 or Intel Arc A750. If your budget is super low, then the minimum would be the Intel Arc A380 or GTX 1650. If you want to jump up to 4040p, the VRAM recommended here is 12 gigs of more, but you can get away with 8 gigs depending on the game. I would recommend at least the RX 6700 or 6700 XT or the RTX 3060 12 gigs of VRAM version. If you have a really low budget for 1440p, then I would recommend at least the RX 6650 XT or Intel Arc A750. And if you want to play at 4K, then I would recommend 16 gigs of VRAM or more, and I would recommend at least the RX 6800 XT or 7800 XT from AMD. Nvidia GPUs usually don't have 16 gigs of VRAM, which is not ideal. So if you want a GPU from Nvidia, you can get the RTX 4070 or 4070 Ti, both capable of 4K gaming. But if you want a better 4k experience overall you're looking to get an rtx 4080 or better to get those 16 gigs of vram or more if this is too expensive for you you can also try looking at the used market for a gpu like the rtx 3090 then moving on to the case, the most important part here is that you get a case with enough airflow and enough fans. A front mesh panel is always ideal and getting a case with three pre-installed fans is ideal as well. If it doesn't come with any fans included, you will have to spend more money and it can become quite expensive. If you have a high budget, then this doesn't matter. But for lower end budgets, I strongly recommend cases with two or more pre-installed fans. The case always should be around a 5 to 10% of your overall budget. Do not spend anything more than this unless aesthetics are a priority for you. PC Power Picker will only show cases that are compatible with your motherboard and that also fit your graphics card. And last but not least, the power supply. Once you finish the build, you will have the estimated wattage in the top right of the screen. As a rule of thumb, I recommend multiplying this number by 1.5 to be safe. And when shopping for a power supply, make sure that the unit that you pick is at least CT rated or more in the PSU qualities list. Link will be in the description. The higher end your build is, the higher tier I recommend. For example, if you have a build with the RTX 4090 and the i9 3900K, I would not buy anything lower end than AT rated. And all of this might sound complicated, so if you just want the best gaming PC for your budget and your needs, I highly recommend you watching my video about the best PC builds of the month. You will have that one in the top right of the screen as well. And trust me, you will not have to think about any of this if you go ahead and just get the PC that you want for the price. And I do also give you the estimated performance on every PC and every resolution. And if you got to this point of the video, comment shadow, I'm a real one. That way I know you're a real one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.